gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going over the top five coolest guns of Brandon Herrera. Bonjour. Brandon, Ooh. thanks for coming back onto the channel, even though we already filmed another video just like right now, literally right now. <laughs> You know, I had to clear my schedule a little bit, but you know, I was able to squeeze in the space. Thank you so much. So I've been doing this series with a lot of the buds, done it with Garantham, done it with Scott, done it with Demo. Now it's your turn. Glad you saved the most mediocre for last. Well, to be fair, I will give you this compliment. You probably have one of my most favorite collections of all the buds. Aw. It's, you got a really good taste. If Brandon's collection was, um. Esoteric and autistic? Yeah. It's my autism. I get to choose a special interest and he chose power weapons. It's like if you played Halo and you get the sniper rifle or like a shotgun, it's like that's Brandon's collection just out the wazoo. But we're missing one person. We need who else? Bring me the donut. Bring me the man of the operator of donuts. Bonjour. 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 <laughs> crazy. I was crazy once. They put me in they a room. They put me in a room. A rubber, rubber room. room. A rubber, rubber room with rats. Rats, rats make me crazy. Cody, welcome to the channel. Doctor. Doctor. Uh, today we're going over Brandon's top five in case you didn't hear it off camera. So, uh... Pizza time, everybody. Let's dive on in. First up, we got the grease gun. Admin from the future here. I want to give a big thank you to Infinite Defense Targets for sending over this self-healing target. We've used these quite a bit here at the channel. Essentially, it's a wonderful matte style target. You can paint it up and it is a, it's a quite a brilliant design and it will save you some money on targets if you're always buying cardboard targets like myself. So big thank you to those guys. Go check them out. Blast to make it. They're made possible by generous sponsors. Sponsors such as Americana Pipe Dream Apparel. Fantastic young Zoomers getting after in the middle of space. I love those guys a lot. They have supported the channel for a while now and they will support you with some fantastic fantastic milsurp to make you look what we call in the biz hella fly so go check those guys out they have an awesome inventory night vision not wait that's the same thing night vision clothing shoes gear anything you might need to really help supplement that inventory a thing you have to worry about though is sometimes they run out of stock of the really cool items so you want to be in the loop with what they have going on so go check them out send them some love oh baby <laughs> So up first we have Brandon's grease gun. Brandon, tell me a little bit about this uh, grease gun, would you? Yeah, sure, dude. So uh, the grease gun is a fully automatic open bolt 45 ACP submachine gun that the United States military used, of course, a lot in World War II and then in Korea and then in Vietnam. They still kind of have them. They're, they're flown about. You can probably pick one up from the US military somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah, as long as you say please, right? Please, you can ask pretty please. Cody, what do you think of the grease gun, dude? I love the rhythmic beat of it shooting. It's unlike any other submachine mm. gun I've shot before. It's almost slow. Compared to a freaking Thompson, it's very slow. It's a very simple gun too. It's like a tube within a tube and then you have some guide rods in there. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why they used them a lot, uh, especially toward the end of World War II. They, a lot of people were opting for the Thompson. The military was opting, and I'm sorry, the, for the grease gun, mm. is because they were so cheap to produce and so yeah. easy to produce. Because I think where the Thompson was about $225, mm -hmm. of course not adjusted for inflation, these were 15. Yeah. So it was pretty clear. Isn't $15 back then like $300? It's gonna be something like that. Yeah. Cause this was, uh, I think the Thompson adjusted for inflation, I think it was like 3,900 bucks. Yeah. It's a pricey gun, dude. It's a very pricey gun. This thing is very cool. So it's like that classic thing from Fury. Now you're killing, now you yank. So you drop that bolt or charge it to the rear. Now you're ready to actually use the gun. And then you have your safety. You just close the dust cover, try and shoot. It won't fire, it puts that little bolt out of battery, so there's not even any drag on it. And then, boop, you can hear that bolt come back into battery, or at least the proper spot to be. We wouldn't call that battery, would we? Uh, at least charged. At least charged, the proper charge, What's I cool about say. the safety, too, is you could let it down, mm -hmm. uh, fire the gun, and it also, the safety also works with the bolt forward. It catches the uh, bolt. And that bolt ain't moving. Safety first. Safety, like Brandon, Brandon said it best. Let's move on. All right, next we have up Brandon's Type 1 AK-47. Now, 
to the uninitiated viewer, you may think, oh, that's just a boring old AK. Who cares about that AK? I don't care about it. It's not a cool looking AK, but I would even consider this to be one of the crown jewels of Brandon's collection. Yes. <laughs> so Brandon, this is a very cool AK. The weapon is hot, but please tell me about it. Yeah, so this is the Type 1 AK-47. This is the first real production model the AK ever had. Of course, the AK was designed yep. 1947, started production roughly 1948. If you read the left side of this trunnion here, yes, angry cops, I said trunnion. It is uh, 1949. There's a lot of neat features about it, like some of the, uh, the stamping choices, uh, the flush rivets in the rear. A lot of things you don't see on modern AKs, flush rivets up front as well, as well as the front trunnion also being a radically different design, including the, uh, the shark fin ejector. This is before the AK had a lot of revisions to simplify it even more mm -hmm. and get it to be uh, mass manufacturable, which they tried. There was the Type 2 afterward, which was completely milled, mm -hmm. the Type 3, which was milled, and then after that, the AK we know and love today, the AKM, so mm -hmm. the stamped variant. Okay. I can stop tizzing out about this now if you want. Well, no, this is really cool because this is so much of like the, the bread and butter that you do here at your channel. So it is cool to see like, what you would consider to be just like the like one of your crown jewels of your collection. Yeah. I'd actually consider this yes. a crown jewel. This is uh this is something that I never thought I'd be able mm -hmm. to to have in my collection until I just happened upon one. And thankfully, you know, the YouTube is uh, YouTube career has been pretty pretty good to me, so I was mm -hmm. able to pick this up for uh, a sum of money that would probably blow most people's mind to spend on an AK. But yeah. to me, it was a good deal. Right, makes sense. No, it's very cool. I dig it a lot. Yeah. Very nice, comrade. Very nice. All right, moving on. Donut, bring me bring the gun of Rambo. Rambo. Here, here's the gun of Rambo. Ah, thank you. One, two, or three? I've only seen one. I've only seen the best one. We have the M60. Now, you may be wondering, hey, I thought you just did a video with Brandon and Cody on the M60. Actually, yes, I did. We filmed that today, and, well, we shot all of our ammo, so you're going to see the shooting from that. <laughs> But the M60 is a very cool universal style machine gun that the US Army rolled out, or the US military, I should say, post World War II, seeing a lot of the inspiration that the Germans had from really cool guns. And it is a very cool piece of Brandon's collection at that. Now, Brandon has an MG3, and it was kind of a toss up yeah. between what I want to do an M60 or an MG3. So I thought, man, let's do the M60 for Brandon's collection because I have done an MG42 before, and I don't really know anyone else in my friend group that has an M60. It, it works out, a bit more unique, I'd say. I'd say. I'd say. How have you enjoyed the M60? Honestly, these things get a little bit of a reputation for being kind of naughty. Uh, a little bit of a pig, a dirty well, pig. Yeah, they, they just don't perform super well or they get um, a lot of issues just with, uh, you know, jams and whatnot, but honestly, We've run through our range days and stuff like that, thousands of rounds through this thing and barely a malfunction. Like occasionally the belts will get a little like uh, tied up on something, but that's any belt fed. As far as the, the function of the firearm, uh, this thing has absolutely blown me away, especially since most machine guns are just in a constant state of being broken. So. Disrepair. Yeah. Cody, what about you? Tell me your M60 thoughts. Dude, I love this thing. Uh, as we were telling you earlier, it's one of the lowest recoil machine guns that Brandon has, so we can just throw, you know, a 100-pound woman on it. And yes. never shot a machine gun. Everyone loves it, man. Mm -hmm. All the range days we host, this is a fan favorite. Yeah. All right, you may take away the gun of Rambo. Thank you, Cody. Moving on. Pizza time, everybody. No. It's pizza time. No. <laughs> Next up, we got the DPM. The dig to, the dig for... Uh, Degterev Polymnyat Modern is in, it's Degterev's modern machine gun. It's a pizza gun. It's a pizza gun. It's a pizza gun. Big old pizza disc on top of this 762 by 54R machine gun that happens to be an open bowl weapon system. It goes hard, it's thick, it's heavy, it's very Russian, 
and it is one of Brandon's cooler guns. Brandon, please take it away. So the, I forget that gas tube gets hot like all machine guns do. Mm -hmm. So this is a pie plate magazine fed 7.62 by 54R flapper lock mm -hmm. open bolt machine gun designed by Deg Tarev, the same gentleman who designed a host of other guns, including the RPD and the Dishka. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, most well-known uh, Russian weapons designers. So a lot of people know it from video games and stuff yeah. like that. This is technically a more modernized version of it. It has a uh, pistol grip down here. Made a couple upgrades to it, basically make it a little bit more serviceable for modern warfare as of World War II. Right, very good. Cody, what's your favorite pizza? <laughs> this one right here? More importantly, does pineapple belong on pizza? Absolutely pineapple belongs on pizza. Yeah. Sweet and salty. Do you it? believe that? I believe a man has a right to choose what goes on his pizza, but I'm a cheese purist. Of course you're a pizza purist, Visconti. Oh! 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 Hey! Oh! Now we move on to the last and largest gun. All right, come on, gentlemen. You see, has a flapper lock? Yeah, flapper like lock. A slur. This thing could take the hat off and elite at 2,000 yards. Stop resisting! <laughs> Now we have the Barrett M82A2, arguably one of the coolest guns in Brandon Herrera's collection. Bonjour. 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 Now, Brandon, this is a very, very cool Barrett. It is extremely rare. I think you were saying in one of your videos when you made this, it was what, less than 20? I think it was around 20. I can't remember. It was like 12 or 22, something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, I think there was like 20 prototypes of this made. This was originally, uh, the army had basically, or the military had gone to Barrett and said, hey, what if we had a more mobile version of the M82A1, one that, you know, was had a little pad there so you could shoot it from the shoulder at, specifically, helicopters. Speak of the devil. <laughs> That's really bad. Weapon's clear. The weapon's clear. It's a joke. No helicopters were flagged in the making of this video. But what they ended up doing is you could actually, you can tell this is never like a production gun because a lot of this stuff, like, even if you take the mag out, you can tell that this is just a standard M82A1 Barrett mag with a square Dremel into it for the, the new system that they mm -hmm. tried here. Yeah, basically they bullp up to Barrett and it's honestly not as bad as you think. Screw you, I'm gonna bullp up your Barrett. <laughs> I think this thing is super duper cool. I mean, if there was any helicopters giving me trouble uh, and I had this thing, there would be like no helicopters giving me trouble. Yeah, it would go I from had. one to zero. Yeah, exactly. Cody, what'd you think of the Barrett, dude? Please hold it, it's, I'm getting tired. It's a little. It's a heavy little boy. I was saying I, I wouldn't want to like trek this through the desert. That's that's for sure. So this is a range day fan favorite too when you ho yes. we host our creator range days. But you got to be careful because if you're a lefty and you put it on your left shoulder, the charging handle reciprocates and you're gonna knock your teeth out. Yep. So we've had people start to put it on their left shoulder. It's like no 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 no. no, 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 no. But this thing's cool. As it's a very cool gun. Definitely you, take down a helicopter. You can fire it left-handed once. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the recoil, dude, you forget like the concussive nature of a 50 cal is so, it's like getting like a quick bop to the face. Yeah. It's like a, if Hezbollah punched you in the face, right? Yeah. 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 Not Hezbollah, but Hezbollah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Very important distinction. Very important distinction right now. There's a lot going on. All right, all right. It's okay. On the M82A2 specifically, because it's a very light recoiling gun, I think, yeah. especially for a semi auto 50. The recoil is not as bad as the concussion. No, the concussion is the worst. Concussion's pretty. Recoil is nominal. Concussion's pretty bad. Especially since the explosion's happening right next yeah. to your face. Your yeah. Face. Well, Brandon, you have arguably one of the coolest collections of all the buds. Thanks for having me out and getting to show it off. Cody, thanks for stopping by as well, man, taking time out of your busy schedule to- uh... Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. Go home. <laughs> I know the line. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh! 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 Hey! Oh!